time to show these kids on Twitch some old school gaming. That's right, nobody lines things up in rows and columns like Professor Joe Hellerstein. Come on, get in there, get down that column. Yes, rows and columns. Grades? Don't worry, we aren't grading you on these data school videos. But I really do have to submit grades. For Computer Science 186, Introduction to Database Systems, it's my biggest class at UC Berkeley. I kid you not when I say that enrollment is up to over 700 students every semester. Now obviously, you don't teach a class that big without an amazing team of teaching assistants. So let's see what they have set up for me, and I'll get to grading. Hey, it looks like my TA Lakshya sent me a spreadsheet. Lots of rows, but only two columns. That's what the grading system requires, so I'm sure that's what he built. But how do I know it's right? We have students' careers at stake here. What I need is the data backstory. I like to call it the data backstory. Most people call it the data lineage. Call it what you will, a spreadsheet with two columns is not enough for me to figure it out. I need to get my eyeballs on the data. Time to get Lakshya on the line. Hello, Lakshya. Hi, Professor Hellerstein. Hey, thanks for sending over that spreadsheet. I do have a few questions. Always happy to walk you through that data lineage, Professor Hellerstein. In fact, I shared my data wrangling flow with you in Trifacta. Want to have a look? Let me share my screen and we'll get to it. Give me the lowdown on these numbers, Laksha. I had to combine data from a bunch of sources, including the class roster and three different grading systems. Why don't you walk through it step by step? You can see for yourself, but I'm happy to provide the blow by blow. Fair enough. I can see your recipe here. And it's way better than just seeing the output in the spreadsheet. But even better, I can walk through the recipe and see what it does with my own two eyes. The visual history. Visual history is one of my favorite features in Trifacta. We'll start at the top of the recipe and replay it visually. Data lineage brought to life. So, I can see that your first step is to join homework and midterm grades to the student roster. When you perform this step, the number of columns in the data set increases because we're adding more information to each student's record. The same thing happens when you join in quiz grades and the final exam grades. Yep, that's correct. Very interesting. I can see you were able to flag the students that are part of the Disabled Students Program by doing a lookup against UC Berkeley's master list. Right. You'll see why in a minute, I'm sure. Okay, the next one's a tough one doc students for turning in the online final late. You created an if statement that excludes those DSP students, and it removes points based on the amount of time assignments are turned in late. Oh, and nice work. Make sure we don't dock so many points that their exam grade goes below zero. That would mess up the tally. Yeah, gotta watch those corner cases. Next, you total the grades for homework and midterm, and from there you just calculate quiz and final exam points, add it all up, and assign the letter grade. This is fine work, Laksha. Thanks, Professor Hellerstein. Walking through this with the visual history, I almost feel like I could have done this without you, but I'm glad you're on the line. I do have a question. Could you have overlooked something here on line 22? I think we told the students we would drop their lowest quiz scores. Oh god, we do that every semester. That's okay. Since we're wrangling this data up in the cloud, I can just go ahead and collaborate with you on editing this recipe. I call that collaborative cloud wrangling. It's like Google Docs or Microsoft 365, but for data preparation. First, let's drop this sum up you did here. Then we highlight the quiz columns and pack them into an array called quizzes. Predictive interaction, remember? We didn't even have to type any code. Yeah, that's right. The recipe was actually mainly built this way. Now let's get the sum of that list and subtract out the minimum and drop that array column. I think that does it, and the edit history captures the details of our collaboration in the cloud. Speaking of history, collaboration isn't just about interaction in the moment. It's also about the things that happen over time. About letting the people that follow us build on our work. Or, you know how sometimes you look at data that you used a year ago? In that case, you're collaborating with your past self. We are not going to forget this in future. In fact, nobody is. I can export this flow and share it on GitHub. What do you think? I think you should commit. But I'm bum. Uh, that's a git joke, Professor Hellerstein. <laughs> right. 
Well, let's export Flow to my desktop as a zip file and commit it to our course GitHub repo. In future, if professors or TAs want to use this, all they'll have to do is upload the flow from GitHub and put it in their Trifecta workspace. Your work will live on at Berkeley, Laksha. And hey, let's not push it with the Git jokes. Oh my God. Sorry, man. Thanks for all your help. I'll let you go and take a well-deserved end of semester break. Thanks, Professor Hellerstein. I'm glad we were able to sort this out together. So there we have it. One more button click, and I regenerate the spreadsheet to upload the correct grades. I admit, Laksha did most of the work, but every data set that matters deserves a second set of eyes on it. The data lineage was critical to validating and correcting Laksha's work. By walking through Trifacta's visual history, I was able to quickly get up to speed on his efforts. And thanks to a modern cloud architecture, collaborative cloud wrangling let me make the fix that was needed, with the entire process recorded for use in future courses. This is the way that effective organizations get their data right, by making it easy for the people to do the right thing. Okay then, now that those grades have been put to bed, it's time for the professor to get back to rows and columns, my friends. Rows and columns.